JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week February the 1st until February the 5th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, following the FOMC decision last week, we have two more central banks on this week's agenda, and those are the RBA and the Bank of England. As for the data, we get the Eurozone's preliminary GDP for the fourth quarter and the, prelim and the Euro area preliminary CPIs uh, for January. From the US, we get the employment report for, uh, for the month, and from Canada, we also have uh, jobs uh, data. So let's take things from the beginning. Today looks to be a relatively light day with the only releases worth mentioning being the final market manufacturing PMIs for January from several Eurozone nations, the Eurozone as a whole, the UK and the US, as well as the US ISM manufacturing PMI for the month. As it is always the case, the final market uh, PMIs are forecast to confirm their preliminary estimates, while the ISM index is anticipated to have declined fractionally to 60 from 60.5. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asian morning, the RBA decides on monetary policy. When they last uh, met, policymakers of this bank kept policy untouched, noting that the Australian economic recovery is underway and that recent data have generally been better than expected. Since then, the unemployment rate declined by more, than, by more than anticipated in December, although the employment change revealed a slowdown in added jobs, while headline inflation accelerated more than forecasted in uh, the fourth quarter, despite staying well below the lower end of the RBA's, of the RBA's target range of 2 to 3 percent. Economic activity also rebounded uh, by more than anticipated. So with uh, all that in mind, we don't expect any action to be delivered at this gathering. We just expect officials to repeat that they stand ready to do more if necessary, but also that the data have continued to, to be better than expected. Investors may decide to pay more attention to the quarterly monetary policy statement due out on Friday, in which the bank uh, presents its economic projections. It would be interesting to see what the bank's outlook is now with the rollout of the coronavirus vac vaccinations. So, if the bank continues uh, to say that uh, the data have been better than expected, and if we see the economic projections being revised uh, slightly higher, this will be positive for the OZ. But generally, we believe that the OZ will stay mostly responsive to developments surrounding the broader market sentiment than. Um, uh, than uh, the developments surrounding monetary policy. We saw the Aussie last week coming under selling interest following the developments with uh, GameStop and other MEM stocks. We saw hedge funds uh, who, who hedge funds which we are short on those MEM stocks closing uh, positions in, along positions on other stocks. So in order to cover their uh, losses from the MEM stocks. Uh, and that's why we saw a risk of uh, trading in, in the second half of uh, last week. I think it was on uh, Thursday. However, the fundamentals, are, in my opinion, the fundamentals are still pointing to a, an, improved, uh, an improved broader market sentiment. We have uh, strong monetary policies around the globe. We have the Brexit uh, trade accord between the EU and the UK. Now Brexit has taken the back seat. Uh, we have a, uh, the prospect of a large fiscal package in the US. We have the coronavirus vaccinations, although at a slower pace, still we, a lot of people are getting vaccinated, which means that 
uh, at some point we will see the global economy uh, to recover. And all this is a blend of developments, in my opinion, that uh, could uh, support, keep the broader market sentiment supported, supported at, the, at least in the first months of, uh, of 2021. Um, now, uh, on, as for Tuesday's data, uh, we get the Eurozone's first estimate of GDP for the fourth quarter, which is expected to have contracted 1.8% quarter over quarter after rebounding 12.7% in the third quarter. This is likely to raise concerns with regards to the bloc's economic activity, especially taking into account the slowdown in the rolling of the coronavirus vaccination. But we believe that the Euro traders are likely to treat this release as outdated, given that we already have data showing how the Euro area economy has entered the new year. The likes of the PMIs. Now, with the composite PMI staying into contractionary territory, the ECB is likely to stay ready to act again if the situation worsens. But with Lagarde saying that the downside risks are less pronounced, and with inflation expected to have rebounded in January, we don't see the case for the ECB uh, easing further its policy at the next policy at the next policy meeting. Now on Wednesday, during the early Asian morning, New Zealand's uh, employment report for the fourth quarter is coming out, and the forecast points to an increasing unemployment rate to 5.6 percent from 5.3 percent. While the the employment change is expected to show that the economy has lost 0.8 percent quarter over quarter jobs the same pace of decline as in the third quarter. Now, back in November, the RBNZ decided to keep its official cash rate and its large-scale asset purchase program unchanged, with Governor Andrea Nor saying that uh, domestic activity since August has been more resilient than previously, than previously assumed. Quarter for inflation stayed unchanged at 1.4% within the bank's target range of 1 to 3%, keeping the probability of negative interest rates at, at very low levels. Although weak employment report could raise some concerns and thereby hurt the Kiwi, we doubt that it could drastically alter expectations around the RBNZ's uh, monetary policy plans. In order for the RBZ for the RBNZ to start considering negative interest rates again, we believe that we need to see more data and disappointing. Now, as for the Kiwi, similarly to the Aussie, it's a really risk-linked currency. I believe that it will be more affected by the broader market sentiment rather than uh, uh, economic data and monetary policy uh, speculation. Now, during the European trading, we have uh, Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for January. The headline CPI rate is forecast to have rebounded to, 0 .2, to plus 0.5 percent year over year from minus 0.3 percent, while the HICP, excluding energy and food, is forecast to have accelerated to 0.7 percent year over year from 0.4 percent. Despite the lockdown measures around the eurozone, uh, around the eurozone uh, lately, at uh, the latest this in gathering President Langard said that the downside risks to the economic outlook are now less pronounced, making in investors skeptical over further raising by the ECB, although the bank repeated once again that it stands ready to adjust all its instruments as appropriate. Thus, improving inflation rates may reduce even further speculation over more raising by the ECB, at least at, at its uh, upcoming gathering. We also get the final market services uh, and composite PMIs for January from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, with the final prints expected to, conf to confirm their preliminary estimates. In uh, the US, we also get the ASM non-manufacturing PMI for January, which is expected to have fallen to 55 from 60.5, as well as the ADP employment report. Uh, which is forecast to show that the private uh, that to, is, is forecast to show that the private sector has gained 45,000 jobs after losing 123,000 in December. Now on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of England. Its previous meeting proved to be a non-event, with officials reiterating that they stand uh, ready to increase their QE purchases uh, pace should market should to market functioning worsens. However, with the UK CPIs rising by more than expected in December and the employment report for December coming in better than, uh, for November coming in better than anticipated, 
we don't expect any change in the bank's policy settings at uh, this gathering. Therefore, all the attention will fall on the bank's economic projections and its findings on the negative interest rates uh, study. Recently, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey played down the prospect of uh, negative interest rates and it remains to be seen whether the findings will be on the same page, namely that interest rates are not as likely as previously thought. Diminishing ever further such a likelihood may be a pleasant news for GBP traders, especially following the Brexit trade accord between the EU and the UK. However, for the pound to extend notably its recent gains, the economic projections would have to be less pessimistic than many believe. Remember that the UK entered a full, a full lockdown in January with the government hinting that this may drag until March, a situation that may weigh notably on the British economy and thereby hinder any potential, uh, any potential recovery. Now, finally, on Friday, the main event is likely to be the U.S. employment report for January. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have rebounded uh, 50,000 after falling 140,000 in December, while the unemployment rate is forecast to have held steady at 6.7%. Average hourly earnings are anticipated to have slowed to 0.3% month over month from 0.8%, but barring any major deviations to the prior uh, monthly prints, this will leave the year-over-year -year rate unchanged at 5.1%. Uh, Last week, uh, the Fed decided to keep its uh, monetary policy settings unchanged, with the only material change in the statement being the part saying that the pace of the recovery in economic activity and employment has moderated in recent months. At the press conference following the decision, Powell stated that it's too early to focus on tapering dates, adding that monetary policy should stay highly accommodative. Although an improvement uh, from December, still the aforementioned forecasts suggest that the labor market is far from returning to a road of a healthy recovery. This may allow Fed policymakers to keep uh, the prospect of further action on the uh, if deemed necessary, on, uh, on well on the table. Now, at the same time with the U.S. employment report, we get jobs data for January from Canada as well. The unemployment uh, rate is forecast to have risen to 8.9 from 8.6%, while the net change in employment is expected to show that the economy has lost 55,000 jobs after losing 62.6 thousand in December. At its prior meeting, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates and the pace of its QE purchases had changed, disappointing those expecting a small cut or even a re-increase of uh, quantitative easing. Officials also noted that uh, as the governing council gains confidence in the strength of the recovery, the pace of uh, net purchases of, uh, uh, of government of Canada and bonds will be adjusted as required, which suggests that the next policy step for Bank of Canada may be tapering its quantitative easing. However, Another soft employment report is unlikely to suggest that such a move may be on the cards in the months to come. It could even push back expectations on that front, something that may prove negative for the Canadian dollar. However, as we noted several times recently, the broader path of this uh, commodity currency will depend on developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. As we already noted, we see risk appetite improving in 2021, at least in the first months, something that could prove supportive for oil prices and thereby for uh, the loony. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and, uh, and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next uh, Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.